So what is up guys, so to the Savage back and today we are here with NFL week 3 predictions. I am always super excited to be making these videos for you. Even though I'm starting to feel a little bit burned out, mainly just because of school. School has been pretty tough, I'm in 11th grade and uh, expectations are risen. But anyways, enough about that. Now, this is going to be the last time in a while where I'm going to have... Be, where I'm going to be predicting 16 different matches because there's going to be teams starting their bye weeks in week 4 and they go up to a week 12. So between week 4 and week 12, there's going to be fewer predictions. But when we get back to week 13, predictions will be rocketing again. But anyways, enough about this. Let's get to the first prediction right now. All right, so here we go getting on to our very first prediction. It is between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans on Thursday Night Football. This is, going to, this is not going to be a good matchup. Straight up. Like, I like offensive battles, but neither of these teams can perform well on offense. Last week, the Jaguars fell short to the Texans, 13-12, and the Tennessee Titans fell short to the Indianapolis Colts, 19-17. So, looking through the stats, Marcus Mariota had himself an okay week. It was not really good. He threw for 154 yards and a touchdown. The Colts' defense stuffed him. Uh, Derrick Henry was literally the only thing that could actually function on the Titans. It's literally Derrick Henry or bust, kind of. But uh, the receivers, they couldn't really get much going. Uh, Mar Mariota just couldn't really get much going. And then their defense played well against Jacoby Brissett and the Colts, but it just wasn't enough as their final drive was absolutely horrific. But anyways, now we move on to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're once again without Nick Foles starting Gardner Minshew. And you know, he didn't have too bad of a week. Uh, 213 yards and a touchdown against the Texans. But um, other than that, he rushed for 56 yards and 6 carries. So maybe he's a bit more mobile than I would have thought. I mean, I couldn't really get that much of a grasp on him since, well, he was he's a rookie. Um, their defense, they played really well. They stuffed a high potently... Uh, they stuffed the Houston Texans, keeping them only at 13 points. But the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, they... They got a touchdown in the fourth quarter, very late, and they had a chance to tie the game. But, of course, they go for two. They go for the win, and they come up short on an incredibly conservative play. This game is going to be a slugfest, but the last time the Titans and the Jaguars faced off, it was the Derrick Henry 99-yard touchdown. I think he's going to pull out something big against the Jaguars as the Titans will run away with a victory. And now we move on to our next matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins. Just plain and simple, it's going to be the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I know I predicted the Miami Dolphins last week, but that was only because it was being pl they were playing the Patriots in Miami. I thought they could pull off an upset, but I'm not going to be that foolish again. It's going to be the Cowboys. Now, this one's going to be very short. Prescott had himself a decent game. Three touchdowns, a pick, 269 yards. Zeke ran all over the uh, Redskins defense. Michael Gallup is injured. He's supposed to miss a couple of weeks, but... um. You know, their defense, they once again fell to Case Keenum. And then you have the Dolphins, Ryan Fitzpatrick, 89 yards, three interceptions. Josh Rosen comes in, throws a pick. And uh, the game was just terrible all around. The Patriots' defense completely stuffed them. Uh, they got picked off three times, not four times. And there were two pick sixes. This is a very easy prediction. It's going to be the Cowboys. But I want to see what the Cowboys can do against a real team. I mean, they got to play the Redskins, Giants, and Dolphins to start their schedule. That's easily 3-0. Wake me up when they actually have someone competitive to face. So now we move on to our very next matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Bengals lost their last game to the 49ers, 41-17. And then the Bills lost their last game to the Giants, beat the Giants, 28-14. Now, same. Now what I said about the Cowboys, I can also say about the Bills. When are they going to play a real team? I mean, they played a pretty decent Jets team, but of course, when they lost one of their better defensive players, the Jets butt-fumbled week one against the Bills, and that let the Bills win the game. And then you have the Bengals, who have actually had a pretty tough schedule. They started out facing uh, the Seahawks, and then they lost the 49ers. Andy Dalton actually looks pretty... actually has not been too bad this season. Last game, he threw 311 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Uh, Joe Mixon cannot get anything going. They have no offensive line. Joe Mixon is an absolute bust. I took this guy like 15th pick in my fantasy draft, and I am already regretting it. Like the main guy that does damage on the team, the two guys that do the main damage on the Bengals are Tyler Boyd and Andy Dalton and John Ross as well. I mean, they're without A.J. Green, but they've been able to put a dent in teams. 
Unfortunately, that defense just can't do anything to save their lives. And then you have the Bills who beat the Giants, which is really no accomplishment. The Giants are absolutely terrible. I mean, they gave up 250 yards to Eli Manning. They picked them off twice, though, through, let them throw in and one touchdown. Barkley ran over for 107 yards and a touchdown. Um, Josh Allen nearly got a 300-yard game. Now, I did find this stat about the Bills is that they have gone 35 consecutive games without a quarterback throwing for 300-plus yards. That's not good. Uh, Frank Gore had himself a decent game, but the big man was Devin Singletary. I just want Sean McDermott to, you know, forget about Frank Gore and start Singletary. And uh, if i got to pick a winner for this one, I think the Bills defense is going to stop the Bengals, plain and simple. So, of course, I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. And now we move on to our very next matchup between the Detroit Lions and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the Detroit Lions took one away from the Chargers as they won 13-10, and the Eagles barely fell to the Falcons 24-20. Now, the we go to the Lions, you know, their offense was okay. You know, the Chargers, they actually have a pretty decent, they have a pretty good defense. Uh, Matthew Stafford threw for 245 yards and two touchdowns, but two picks. The rushing game, as always, you never really got anything going. But then, of course, you had Kenny Galladay. Eight receptions, 117 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, after his week one stunner, he got completely stuffed by the Chargers. The defense actually played very well. They played very well in the clutch. Uh, Phillip Rivers, on the game-winning drive, they ended up picking him off in the end zone. And the Chargers on the one-yard line... They, the Lions forced them to fumble. So they were clutch on defense last week, and if they can keep this up, the ride to beating the Eagles will be much easier. And then you move on to the Eagles losing to the Falcons and in a very, very sloppy game of football. Sure, the defense picked off Matt Ryan three times, but they couldn't stop Julio Jones as Julio Jones went for 106 yards and two touchdowns on you. Carson Wentz was terrible. 231 yards, a touchdown, two picks. The rushing game was absolutely terrible. Uh, all their big game, all their big game guys, all Sean Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, they were injured. Nelson Aguilar had himself a decent game, eight receptions, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Ertz, he was fine, but all, they almost all got injured. Uh, Wentz got injured for a bit, and they pulled in Josh McCowan. But honestly, this Eagles team is—it's literally last week Eagles and Falcons. It was literally hospital bowl or injury bowl team. They were both battered and injured. So this matchup, could, to me, could go either way, but I'm going to say the Lions are going to win this one because the Eagles have absolutely no secondary. So this one's going to go to the Lions. So now we move on to our very next matchup between the New England Patriots and the New York Giants. Once again, this is maybe one of the easier games to predict. It's going to be the Patriots, plain and simple. So I'm just going to briefly go over, once again, the Patriots. They destroyed the Dolphins 43 to nothing. Uh, Tom Brady barely had to lift a finger. You know, he threw for 264 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Antonio Brown sh flashed off a little bit with uh, four receptions, 56 yards, and a touchdown. Like, their, their offense barely had to lift a finger as the defense is what really did the damage, especially in fantasy football, for at least 43 points. And then you move on to the New York Jets, who are actually in so much trouble right now. You know, they lost Quinn and Williams, another one of their defensive players. Jamal Adams is not happy with the team at all, uh, but the big one was losing Trevor Simeon. Because um, even though Sam Darnold's out with mono, he's going to be out for a few weeks. Uh, Trevor Simeon got injured, a very scary leg injury, so they had to rely on their third-string quarterback, Luke Falk. Yeah, if you think Luke Falk could take you to the Super Bowl, you need to get checked out. You just need to think again. That is not happening at all. Uh, Le'Veon Bell can only carry the team so much. So if, this, if there's going to be a winner, it's going to be the Patriots. And also the Jets, they have a very tough schedule coming up. They got the Patriots, Eagles, Cowboys, and Patriots again within the next five weeks, including their week four bye week. So enjoy this, Jets. Enjoy butt fumbling down to the last place. But just this time, if you're going to tank, don't butt fumble it, please. Once again, Patriots are winning this game, plain and simple. And if you were looking before the NFL regular season, this game would look pretty good between the Indianapolis Colts and Atlanta Falcons. But with luck retired, this game is not going to be as good, but... Anyways, the Colts, they came off a 19-17 victory over the Titans, and the Falcons came off a 24-20 victory over the Eagles. Starting with the Colts, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I was very, very concerned about their defense, you know. They had to take, they'd taken on the Chargers, which they lost to. They took on the Titans. They stuffed them. The defense is still questionable. Jacoby Brissett, once again, threw for 146 yards, three touchdowns and a pick. Uh, Marlon Mack really couldn't get anything going, but that's okay. You had Jordan Wilkins who took over for 
82 yards and five carries. Uh, the receivers were all right, but of course they'd be much better off if they had if Andrew Luck hadn't retired. And then you move on to the Atlanta Falcons, who um, Matt Ryan to me is very very questionable. You know, he may have thrown for 320 yards and three touchdowns, but that also came with three interceptions. Devontae Freeman can't get anything going. Back to Matt Ryan for a second. I don't know. His decision-making's been off, and I think right now I could be, we might be seeing the decline of Matt Ryan. Even though his 2016 and 28 seasons were absolutely stellar, I think he's starting to regress, and it's not looking good. But of course, Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley lit up the um, Eagles secondary, both combining for 211 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, their defense, well, you're going up against the Eagles. They're a tough team to go up on defense, but if i got to pick a winner for this game, I'm going to go with the Falcons. I think Matt Ryan will finally make better decisions and will actually throw not throw two-plus picks this game. I think he's going to go four touchdowns and no picks. So the Falcons run away with this one. And now we move on to our very next matchup between the Oakland Raiders and the Minnesota Vikings. So the Raiders, they came off a 28-10 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Vikings just fell short of the Packers, 21-16. Now, um, starting off with the Raiders, what happened? Like, you went up against a strong defense in the Denver Broncos, and then you could barely function against the Kansas City Chiefs. They are literally no defense, and Derek Carr threw for 198 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. He kind of regressed to the way he was last year. Josh Jacobs, you know, ran for nearly, was ran for 99 yards. He had a pretty good game. Tyrell Williams, eh. He got his five receptions for 46 yards and a touchdown. The defense, well, what can I expect from you guys? You're facing Patrick Mahomes, who lit you up for more than 400 yards. Like, there's not much else you can do against those guys. But then you move on to the Minnesota Vikings. You know, at first they were, were not playing well. The Packers had completely stuffed them. Aaron Rodgers was running all over you guys. But then all of a sudden, the Packers offense stalled out, you know, uh, Dalvin Cook running all over the defense for 154 yards and a touchdown. Kirk Cousins was making a bit of a comeback. But of course, this is Kirk Cousins we're talking about. He is one of the most unclutch quarterbacks. He cannot beat teams over 500. And he threw a costly interception in the red zone down by five. So they completely choked. I mean, the Packers nearly choked. But their defense tightened up just a little bit more so they could take out the Packers. And um, if i got to pick a winner of this game... Yeesh, I'm not sure. You know, I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to say Oakland Raiders will run into Minnesota and stun the Fel and stun the Vikings. And now we move on to what I think should be the Thursday night football matchup. This is between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, they came off a 28-10 victory over the Raiders, and the Baltimore Ravens came off a 23-17 victory over the Cardinals. Now, the Chiefs, well... Patrick Mahomes is just as good as ever, throwing for 443 yards and four touchdowns. The defense was able to stop Josh Jacobs and the Raiders. Uh, the rushing game was ineffective. LaShawn McCoy and Damian Williams barely could get anything going. Uh, you know, usually Sammy Watkins was a little bit down this week, but uh, Travis Kelsey resurged for 107 yards, and Patrick Mahomes can really make any receiver look like he's a complete stud, as he made Demarcus Robert Robinson Looked like a stud with six receptions, 172 yards, and two touchdowns. That's insane. And then the Ravens, they beat the Cardinals. Well, Lamar Jackson actually looks to be a pretty decent quarterback. Now, to be honest, though, he hasn't really had to go up against that much of competition. Like, he had to go up against the Dolphins and the Cardinals. The Cardinals actually put up a decent challenge. Uh, Jackson threw for 272 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 120 yards. To be honest, if he can do this against a really good team, he could be the new Michael Vick. Hopefully minus the dogfighting cases. Uh, Mark Andrews, the tight end, he loves his tight ends. And uh, as he got eight receptions, 112 yards, and uh, a touchdown as Hollywood Brown. Not near as historic of a performance, but he did end up with eight receptions for 86 yards. Very good game. Now these two faced off last year, and it was a, an epic matchup. And if I want to pick a winner for this one... I really don't know who to go with, but to be honest, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to out... To be honest, once Lamar Jackson faces a real team, then we can really see what he's made of. But I think the Chiefs will win this one. And now we have our very next matchup between the Denver Broncos and the 
Green Bay Packers. Now, uh, the Broncos, they fell short to the Bears 16-14, to and then the Packers ended up beating the Vikings 21-16. to Now, to start for the Packers, they played a decent game of football. You know, the first half, they were looking really... The first quarter, they were looking very good. Aaron Rodgers, you know, last game he threw for 209 yards and two touchdowns. Aaron Jones ran all over that defense with 116 yards and a touchdown. Devontae Adams, no touchdowns, but 106 yards. That's very good. But uh, to be honest, they, they the offense stalled. After the first half, they didn't score a single point, but their defense did prove to be clutch against a, def a decent offense in the Minnesota Vikings, picking off Kirk Cousins twice. And then you have the Denver Broncos, well, Joe Flacco, threw for 292 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Uh, the rushing game wasn't too good, but Emmanuel Sanders was really the highlight. 11 receptions, 98 yards, and a touchdown. Joe Flacco is like the king of checkdowns. But, uh, you know, the, the Broncos nearly won it, but they got screwed over by the refs, and uh, somehow the Bears making a field goal. But I'll get to that one later. There was not really much I could say about this one, except the Broncos are terrible, and the Packers will easily win this game. Plain and simple. No competition. And now we move on to our very next matchup between the Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers. The Car the Cardinals fell short to the Ravens, 23-17, to and the Panthers fell short to the Buccaneers, 20-14. 20, 20 to 14. Now, what has happened in the past two weeks with the Baltimore Ravens, I mean, Arizona Cardinals, is that they haven't really scored that much until it was the fourth quarter. I mean, Zane Gonzalez, he's actually making kicks. Like, once he was let out of the factory of sadness in the Browns, he actually became a pretty decent kicker on the Cardinals, but enough about him. Kyler Murray looked pretty good, 349 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. David Johnson wasn't really too much. But Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald are really what have brought out Kyler Murray. The defense, they did all right to stop Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And now we move on to the Carolina Panthers, who were absolutely terrible. The fact that Christian McCaffrey got 37 rushing yards against the Buccaneers defense is absolutely concerning. The fact that it was the friggin' Buccaneers that stuffed the Panthers is absolutely terrifying. And also Cam Newton might be in some trouble. Even though he threw for 333 yards, he didn't even complete 50% of his passes. Uh, he couldn't get anything going on rushing. McCaffrey was stuffed and you didn't even pick off Jameis Winston once. And he has one of the worst and he's one of the worst decision makers in the NFL and he was able to run all over you guys. Thursday night football against the Buccaneers was absolutely disgusting. And uh, Cam Newton's very concerning with his injuries as he hasn't showed up to the past couple of practices so he might not like without Cam Newton these guys are screwed and also stuffing McCaffrey. If you can just take out uh, Newton and McCaffrey, you guys are set. And that's what I think the Cardinals will do. The Cardinals, they will run away with a victory. And now we have our very next matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New York Giants. The Buccaneers, they beat the Panthers 20-14. to And the Giants, well, they lost the Bills 28-14. to To start with the Buccaneers, they got lucky last week. You know, they did a very good job, though, with their defense. Stuffing McCaffrey. Cam Newton was not functioning. Their offense was okay. You know, 82 rushing yards and a touchdown from Peyton Barber. Uh, Jameis Winston didn't throw a pick, which is actually nothing short of a miracle. Chris Godwin did everything in receiving, and uh, their kicking, well, their kicking's always bad, and Matt Gay, well, he missed a field goal. So, um, I'll be honest, the Buccaneers, they were lucky to run away the victory. And then you move on to the New York Giants. The memes are finally here! Eli Manning has officially been benched, and now it is time for Daniel Jones, I swear to God. I hope Daniel Jones flops. Like, to be honest, the memes would be glorious, you know? You take him sixth overall. Like, one one part of me wants him to completely fail so I can laugh at the Giants, but one part of me wants him to succeed. Maybe it's the end of an it's the end of the Eli Manning era. But of course, I love but Eli Manning, we all have to praise him like a god since he did stop the Patriots from getting eight Super Bowl rings. That's nothing short of a miracle to me. And, uh, you know, last week they had a tough time against the Bills. Barkley went over for 107 yards. I uh, didn't get much going in receiving, but you're going up against the Bills defense. But to be honest, this was a much-needed change for the Giants. I didn't think it would be this soon. I thought maybe it would be midseason. But if i got to pick a winner for this game, I think Daniel Jones is going to collapse. Tampa Bay Buccaneers will win this one. And now we move on to our very next matchup between the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the Saints, they came off a 27-9 loss against the L.A. Rams. 
And the Seahawks, they won 28-26 to against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, with Drew Brees gone, here's what our season's going to be. Saints are sinking. But that's not out of the way. Anyways, no, but the Saints, they're in a little bit of trouble. Um, but Teddy Bridgewater, hopefully he can actually come in and thrive all over thrive over the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the last time he faced the Seahawks, it was in the 2015 wild card game where Blair Walsh missed a gimme field goal. But uh, I think I, currently I like what Sean Payton's doing. You know, he's being quiet about who he's going to start, Taysom Miller, Teddy Bridgewater, so they can so he can throw off Pete Carroll and how they're going to play the game. But last week they got completely stuffed by the LA Rams. Their defense was just immaculate uh but of course we got screwed over by the refs again but it wasn't in that big of a situation our defense fell to jared goff todd Gurley, and cooper cup and then you move on to the seattle seahawks who beat the pittsburgh steelers you know russell wilson threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns rashad penny and chris carson combined for about 120 rushing yards uh dk metcalf was completely legit but to be honest most of this victory came from the fact that they were not playing Ben Roethlisberger. Mason Rudolph had to come in for an injured Big Ben. He did a decent job, but if I'm going to pick a winner for this one, I'll be honest, as much as I want to say no, my optimism is just way too high. New Orleans Saints are going to win this one. Despite our season be sinking, I swear to God, it's the last time I do this. And then we move on to our very next matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Houston Texans. Now, the Chargers, they lost the... Lions 13 to 10, and the Texans lost to beat the Jaguars 13 to 12. Now to start off with the Chargers, you know they made too many key mistakes in key situations. Austin Eckler once again ran all over that defense of the Lions. I mean, not as much as he did against the Colts. He only got 66 yards. Philip Rivers threw for 293 yards, but he threw one interception at the end of the game, which would have won it for them, but. They ultimately just fell up short. Their defense did okay to stop Matt Stafford and the uh, Lions, but it just wasn't enough. And then you have the Houston Texans. You know, they they stopped Gardner Minshew the second. That's not too much of an accomplishment, but Minshew doesn't look too bad. But Jacksonville's defense completely stopped the Houston Texans as Watson was only limited to 159 yards. Carlos Hyde got himself 90 rushing yards. Hopkins was very, very limited. Only 40 yards. But of course the defense was able to pull through and stop Jacksonville as they almost won the game on a two-point conversion. I'll be honest, there's not much else I can say about this game. Pick a winner, I'm going to say the Chargers. Now we have our very next matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now the 49ers came off a 41-17 victory over the Cincinnati Bengals and the, Se and the Pittsburgh Steelers lost the Seahawks. 28 to 26. Now, Jamie Garoppolo had himself a decent game, throwing for 296 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. Matt Breida ran all over the Bengals for 121 yards. Now, that's not much of an accomplishment as, well, the Bengals don't have that good of a defense. Uh, Debo Samuel, Marquise Goodwin, you know, they combined for over 160 yards. Uh, George Kittle has been very limited. They haven't got too much to him, but I think he'll break out. And then you have the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're without Big Ben. He's out for the season with an elbow injury. Now you have Mason Rudolph. James Conner was, last week was absolutely ineffective. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster got five receptions, 84 yards. Vance McDonald came back a little bit. Seven receptions, 38 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, last year, a big problem for the... Uh, Steelers was kicking, but Boswell had himself a decent game. But uh, there's not too much I can say about this. I think the 49ers could go... I don't know what this way could go, but the 49ers, I think they could go off to a 3-0 start. Now, the Steelers' defense, they did get a little bit stronger with Minka Fitzpatrick, but I still think the 49ers will pull away with a victory. And then we have our Sunday night football matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Los Angeles Rams. The Browns came off a 23-3 victory over the New York Jets, and the L.A. Rams beat the Saints 27-29. Now, both these teams had pretty easy victories. Now, I don't know. The Browns haven't really played the greatest of football. They might be 1-1, one one, but Week 1 against the Titans was a mess, and Week 2 wasn't even their greatest match. But, of course, the Jets were just not as good of a team. Uh, Baker Mayfield threw for 325 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. 
Nick Chubb ran for 62 yards and a touchdown, but the big man, OBJ, you know, they say, wear that $350,000 watch, you play like a $5 bill. This guy played like he was a two, had, was wearing the $2 million watch, and that led to six receptions, 161 yards, a touchdown, and another amazing catch that he can only pull off, another amazing one-handed catch that he could pull off at MetLife Stadium. And then you have the LA Rams. Well, this game was pretty sail smooth and once uh, Drew Brees went down. But Jared Goff had himself a decent game, 283 yards and a touchdown. Gurley, of course, his workload has been cut, but he did rush in for a touchdown. Cooper Cup went on a bit of a beast quake as the Saints. We still don't know how to tackle a player, plain and simple. But the defense was able to stuff Teddy Bridgewater. Now, um, there's not so much I can go off against these guys. Now, uh, how well can they do when they're not playing the NFC South underperforming due to quarterbacks not being able to perform? One, because Cam Newton is might not be the same person and with Drew Brees being gone. If I want to pick a one of this one, I'm going to go with the Rams. Rams are going to win this one. And now we have our very last matchup, which is on Monday Night Football between the Washington Redskins and the Chicago Bears. Now, the Redskins, they lost the Cowboys 31-21, to and the Bears barely beat out the Broncos 16-14. to Now, Case Keenum, he's actually been having himself not a bad season. You know, he's maybe going through that fluky Minnesota trend that he went through back in 2017. He threw for 221 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. And, um, you know, the receivers did all right. The rushing game was ineffective, but the defense just got completely destroyed by the Dallas Cowboys. That's expected as the Cowboys have one of the better offenses in the league. Not much else I can say about that. And then you have the Chicago Bears, who barely ran away with a victory. Uh, Mitch Trubisky was not good, 120 yards. Um, David Montgomery finally got the rushing going as the Bears decided now they can ru- now that he can actually rush more. Ran in for 62 yards and a touchdown, but they got ultra lucky on their last drive. One because of a BS roughing the passer call on Bradley Chubb, apparently touching a quarterback is roughing the passer, and Trubisky on a 4th and 10 game on the line somehow actually made a good pass, and um, their kicker, Eddie Pinero, actually made a 53-51 yarder, 51 or 53 yarder to win the game. That was so disappointing, because if he had missed that, the memes would be glorious, but the memes would not live on. If i got to pick a one of this game, I think it's going to be the Chicago Bears. And that is my video for today. Thank you guys all for watching my NFL Week 3 predictions. If you want to see my Week 1 and Week 2 predictions, link will be in the description below. Make sure to like this video. Comment down below if you want to see. Subscribe, of course. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at SuitedSavage. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Hoodat Nation is out.